Hey folks and welcome to this video. Uh, today I wanted to share a video with you uh, created by a gentleman by the name of Mark Chapman. He runs the Underground Traders Alliance and he is the uh, creator of the Killswitch software. And the Killswitch software is essentially a piece of software that operates as a proxy between the, the trader and your trading platform. And then it is able to kind of maintain um, a status on, on how you're trading. So if you're losing a lot or you're winning a lot, and as a result of perhaps, let's say, a string of losses, this piece of software is able to see this and it is able to kind of mitigate any potentially bad decisions by um, deactivating certain parts of your trading platform. This is because you're opening trades via the kill switch software, which is not allowing you to do so if you're if you're experiencing some kind of emotional distress. So it's a really cool piece of software and I suggest that you uh, check it out. This is where it is, killswitchsoftware.com. And here you can read a little bit about what it does. There's a small forum that helps you get it installed properly and maybe learn a bit about how to configure it. Then you can download it here on the download page, okay? Good, so now I'm gonna show you a video that is uh, pretty interesting. And this is about um, essentially stop hunts. So I'm gonna sign out for now, uh, watch the video, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Hello and welcome to this training about iceberg orders. Uh, it's important that we first start off with understanding what those three core major disciplines are that I discussed in the, the previous video. So number one, we've got breakout traders. Number two, we've got retracement traders. Right, your pullbacks, your Fibonacci people. And then number three, we've got level traders. Right, term um, stroke supply, demand traders, etc. Basically, buying off support uh, and uh, selling off resistance. That type of that type of trader. Now then, what we're going to focus on is we're going to focus on the third one, uh, level trading in this uh, in this training. So before we do that, though, we need to uh, understand the question about what. Uh, Iceberg orders. What are the? How do we? Uh, how do we take advantage of them? How can can we use them to make money in the financial markets? Um, an iceberg is exactly uh, what it says on the tin, right? And the tip of the iceberg is really the best way to describe iceberg orders. So right, you've, got, uh, you've got some uh, uh, sea there in the Antarctic and you've got this huge structure below the surface. But the, uh, the ship that's sailing along, forgive my uh, drawing of a ship, the ship that's sailing along actually only sees a little amount of that enormous superstructure below the surface. Okay, they only see the tip literally of the iceberg and um, they don't they don't fully understand the, the gravity of what's going on underneath them um, and that's really how uh, we want to uh, we want to think about what's going on at levels when big banks and institutions are essentially working a level and the retail trader is kind of just focused all their attention on the tip of the iceberg, they're missing this whole monster that's going on beneath them that they can't uh, they can't see and usually don't even not even aware that it's going on. Um, right then, so level. We're gonna we're gonna discuss a level of resistance. All right. So here's your level of resistance. All right. Now the the key is that the level wants to have been touched several times. Now when you have some price action that comes up to a level and turns away. Many people call that uh, essentially uh, uh, resistance when price turns away from the level the first time. It's not, it's not true because what that could actually be is simply profit taking from the traders who've been making money from down in this location, right? So they've, they've made a, a ton of money and they're perhaps uh, have decided that they want to take some off the table and then as price uh, gets to that level where they, they make that choice then then obviously the, as they're taking profit if they're a buyer down here the way that they realize that profit right take profit in their account is they liquidate some partial 
profits or maybe all profits but either way if they're originally a buyer in that trade uh, they must sell to exit and essentially profit from uh, that scenario right price going up uh, in the direction that they'd, uh, that they'd originally hoped so that first touch is not is not uh, wise to describe as a level of support or resistance in this case uh, it could just be profit taking now what makes a level turn from a, a level that's potentially just profit taking into actually a level of resistance is when it's touched twice okay so if it's touched twice you've now got yourself a level okay so let's just carry on with this idea so we've got our level of resistance now we know that it's resistance so here's the level price came up to it the first time sold off there's number one then came up to the second time and then starts to uh, starts to sell off now here's the thing part of being able to understand iceberg orders and be able to trade them effectively is to actually assume the role of the trader who is selling off that resistance level in the first place right so become that level trader now the vast majority of people um, who trade for any length of time uh, will have at some point used one of these core uh, three major core disciplines and and the uh, the level trader um, there's some very typical behavior that that person would would do now if you're new to trading uh, you probably want to get yourself along to baby pips or have a look on YouTube there's plenty of free information out there about levels of support and resistance and so just essentially learn how to trade and look for support and resistance on a chart but for those people who have experience and you know exactly what I'm talking about and what I want you to do is I want you to become the level trader again so bit of introspection is required what is it that made you uh, trade off a level historically or maybe you're doing it currently and you're trading so I would wager that it has something to do with this so you have a very clear defined first touch and then price comes up to the second touch and confirms that it's actually a level so it starts to sell off now then this is what I refer to as entry cheese okay entry cheese so just like cheese traps the mouse right <laughs> tempts the mouse in to take the cheese um, traders are essentially tempting to take the bait and what is the bait well it's to come in off the sidelines to take some risk believing that what they believe uh, had happened historically is going to happen at that level again if you think about the process of of taking a trade that's how it all starts once you've done your analysis and then it's really focusing on the price action in the here and now and if it starts reacting in a way that you believe is conducive to a good trade or potentially a good trade then you're going to pull the trigger and come in off the sidelines and take some risk before that point you didn't come in off the sidelines so what what, what entry cheese essentially does is it makes you commit capital and once you commit that capital from your account right so here's your your trading account and it has you know uh, unknown quantity of money and it can be anything but whatever that figure is, it's never going to come in off the sidelines and take some risk and actually uh, be in the game unless you are convinced that the, the level in this case is actually working. And that's where the, uh, the entry cheese comes in. Now entry cheese can uh, come in many different guises. Don't take that to, to mean it's a little bit wishy-washy and ambiguous. It's not. It's just that it can, it can take different forms. But the point is that when price comes up into the level, it actually starts to react off that level. Now, let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. It's important to get our heads around entry cheese because that really lays up uh, how this whole process of iceberg orders uh, actually works at the level so price comes up so this is we'll pretend this is our second touch right so we've had the touch off to the left price comes to the level now what can happen at the level what was it that made you take the trigger to pull uh, the trigger and take some risk historically was it a big engulfing candle at the level right could be that'll get a lot of traders in maybe it's an outside candle at the level where it takes out the higher the prior candle right with a wick and then breaks below the law of the prior candles law and then closes near its laws would that be a reason for you to pull the trigger for some people it would be for a lot of traders it would be do you need uh, a second uh, trade in the sorry a second candle in the the direction of the move does it need to be three candles two three right one 
two, three. Does it need to be uh, that to get you to pull the trigger? The point is that this entire area can't be too big, right? And the reason for that is this. If, for instance, you've got this range as an example, and you know we're looking at that as potentially a, a level to sell off, you're gonna to have to come in at some point because before much longer, it's gonna to get to the other side of the range and you've missed the trade. So this really needs to occur in that first sort of third of the prior you move up. Okay, so it's just in that third, that first third where entry cheese is essentially going to collect anybody who was going to come in off the sidelines, who was actually gonna trade that resistance at all, right? The world over, anyone who was going to trade resistance, that would have that would have essentially included all of those traders that it could have included. Again, I don't know um, whether or not it's an engulfing candle that's gonna get the trader in. I don't know whether you need two candles. I don't know whether you need some type of fractal swing structure, something like that. It, the point is that if it's in that first third, it's probably got everybody, and we don't really need to define, you know, what were the reasons for those people to take those trades per se, other than to say, did this look tempting? Here's the hard right edge, right, of the chart. And none of us really focus on what's coming in the future. And that's why we focus on the here and now. And this is why entry cheese is so powerful because once we've done that historical analysis, a price revisits that level, it starts to work off the level, then that's gonna tempt you in to ultimately come in off the sidelines and take some of that risk in your, in your account. So as I say, that first third is usually enough to get everybody in. And just look at it, look at historical levels of entry cheese, look at levels of support and resistance, and just see as price comes back in for that second or third time, obviously the more the merrier, and I'll explain that in a moment, but just look and see what price did every time it sold off at the level when it had been there historically. And what that will do is that will give you an insight as to how price reacts off these levels and the, the different variations um, on the theme that you can have, but ultimately, did it look enticing? You know, if you were that level trader, you looked at that level, you liked the level, would that be a level uh, that would interest you? Point one, point two, when price revisits it, does that price action at the hard right edge, as it touches the level, is it convincing um, and is it tempting and would you have historically took that trade and took some risk? And if the answer is yes, then you're not the only one who would have done that, okay? And that's how entry cheese works. Now then, so with all that being said, let's take a look at an iceberg order. So what are iceberg orders? Okay, imagine you're a big bank, all right? You've got a big problem, and the, the problem you've got is that um, sometimes out of necessity, you have, to, you have to trade on a certain day. And the easiest way to describe this is, is just to consider a merger and acquisition of a massive, a massive company. So imagine a, a huge company in the US looking to buy a company in the UK on a certain date that that's occurring. Essentially the transaction, the clause has to occur, so they have to buy that currency or sell that currency, uh, et cetera, to purchase that, uh, to purchase that company. Now that's just like buying and selling and closing on a, a house, right, on a home, or going to collect your new car and, and you know, having to be at the garage at a certain day and then you have to make that transaction. What's well, no different, it's just on an enormous scale. Uh, so the bank has an issue because that date has to transact, and obviously they're going to have prior uh, warning of this. So let's just say Goldman Sachs gets a, 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 an order from a client who needs to buy a ton of currency on a certain day because they're buying a company. The bank's problem, though, is that um, the size involved will move the market, right? So if they just dumped uh, all their trading on the position in that one moment, the market will start moving. It'll really move fast against where they want to do business. Now, the bank wants to buy and sell uh, currency just like any, anybody makes money in buying and selling anything in life, right? Don't paper clips, take your pick. It doesn't matter. You've got to try and attempt to sell high and buy low, right? But if everybody's doing that, 
well, just just to uh, just to continue that idea a little more, um, if if the bank if price comes up into the level and the bank wants to sell at say the figure one hundred. The problem is they can't, they can't take all that position in one go, that's what I'm saying, because the market will drop or the market will rise really quickly away from the price that they want to they get, right? They want to do business in and around 100. Now, this is why an iceberg order exists, because what they have to do is they have to work the level itself to give people the impression that it's not actually going to sell off or it's not actually going to rise and it, they manipulate price in and around the level so that it tempts traders in, people get stopped out and it allows the bank to do its bidding uh, to get a lot of its uh, work done in and around the area of the price it wants to do the work uh, without causing uh, the market to move too far and then once they've got all that work done essentially then you know if it's if it's at a level of resistance then it then it'll drop and that's what we're trying to take advantage of we're trying to see where they do business and where they're taking these trades and how the the iceberg order works as I say the tip of the iceberg right the the the, the retail trader and many uh, many professionals are, are, are only seeing the the, the top the tip of the iceberg. They're not actually seeing the whole, the whole thing, and that's why the the banks uh, can get away with it because it's very difficult to spot unless you know what to look for. And that's what I'm going to teach you now. So remember, I said a moment ago, the more levels touched, the better. Well, that's for a couple of reasons. One is the more levels touched, the more obvious it is, the more eyeballs are going to be on the level, right? more people are going to be able to see it, which means that if more people see it, then more people will take the trade. If more people take the trade, then it follows that there's more liquidity sitting above uh, these structures or below these structures. So if you have a level that's touched once, twice, three times, etc., then that's great because what's happening, if you sold here or if you were selling here at the level, where would you place your stop loss order? And I would wager it's somewhere just above the level itself. So what is a stop loss? Well, when, when we're taking trades at the hard right edge, as I said, people, are foc people take a trade like this. They focus on the historical patterns and they do that analysis. Then once they think, all oh, right, that's a, a decent level of resistance, I'm, I might look at this trade. They're not committing at this point. Then it's a question of how price reacts at the level. Is it, is it essentially working in a, in a way that will tempt them in off the sidelines? So yes, it starts to do that and they, they get ready to pull the trigger. Not only that though, when they enter, uh, their stop loss placement becomes very, very obvious. It's usually just above the structure itself. So what are stop losses? Essentially, it's money. It's money. Now then, if, uh, if our friend the big bank is going to sell off a level, right, so let's just pretend this is our, this is our touch where this is going to tempt traders in, right, and the bank wants to sell at this, uh, this hundred figure, um, as price comes up to the as price comes up to the level, people will will look to go short and they'll place the stops above here, and that is money. But what type of uh, money is sat there? What type of contracts are there? Well, if you sell at the level, your stops are buy orders. Now then, it, why is that important? Well, if the bank wants to do some selling too, right? so don't, don't forget the bank wants to sell here too. The problem is they can't sell when everyone else is selling and they can't do it all in one place because there's not going to be enough people on the other side of the tr trade. There's not going to be the liquidity for, for, for that transaction to, to complete. So what, what happens is the bank wants to sell there too, but um, because everyone else is selling there, what, what they'll do is they'll work, that, they'll work that level so that they can induce and seduce and stop out traders, uh, encourage people to come in, and then it, it, it allows them to do the, the selling in the shadows, and then boom, down goes, uh, down goes the price. So those buy orders are important because if 
those retracement traders, uh, sorry, those resistance traders go short off the level and price starts going against them, right? Starts moving against them towards their stops. If they get stopped down, those buy orders being triggered. And that's called forced buying, right? Nobody wanted that buying to occur, right? So these sellers uh, didn't, didn't want that to occur. So what happens is, as price goes up through the level, it triggers the stops. And as the trigger, the banks start to sell in the face of that liquidity. So they sell as those buy orders are getting popped at the level. Okay, and that allows them to do some more selling because those resistance traders are essentially getting stopped out. So price comes up to the level, starts to come down, and then boom, goes against them. Now imagine that's just one big scary engulfing candle to the upside, right? And imagine this is where the stop losses are, ISL. So we've just described that because price has now gone up through the level, it's triggered the vast majority of those stops. So the bank got to do some selling. And interestingly, the bank wants to do business around 100, but it's actually just done some business at 110. So it's, imp it's improved its prices, it's got a better price, higher up. So this was, a, this was a forced transaction. Now, there's something else about to occur, and it's due to the nature in which price goes up through the level. So let's just say we get that first major engulfing candle, that's candle number one, goes up through the level. Then we get the second one, candle number two. Now then, what, what's going to occur here as prices start to trigger up through that level? Now this is the tip of the iceberg, right? What, the, what, will, what will happen at this point is momentum stroke breakout traders will start to enter into the market. They'll start to pile in and go long. And this is not forced in, in as far as it's not forced in, in as, as much as the don't want to do it. It is forced in as much as they want to do it. This is what I call willing buying. So as price breaks out through that level, and imagine this level's been touched several times, this is the third time it's been touched and it's breaking, what do breakout traders, what's their psychology during a, a moment of price action like that? Well, because it's been touched several times, the level, they'll believe that the level is gonna pop, really pop strongly and break up through that level. So they're gonna pile in because they think that, you know, price is going, uh, going, up, uh, going up to the moon. So they go along. So what's gonna happen next? What are the banks going to do? You guessed it. They're going to start selling in the face of that willing buy-in. So let's just think what's, what's happened so far. The first thing was that sellers got induced and seduced into a, a triple top uh, resistance. And, and that's the other thing. You know, people have believed that the more levels touched, the stronger it gets. So the fact that it's, it's, it's obvious because people will see it the third time. Also, people believe it's, it's getting stronger because of that. So people go short, they sell, they place the stop losses above these structures. As they go short, believing that's going to follow through because of the entry cheese at the level, right, they commit the capital. Now, now the fair game. The money sat above here, you get a big engulfing candle up through the level, and the bank gets to sell in the face of that forced buy-in. So the bank gets to do some selling. What's happening now is people are willingly coming in because they believe that level's broken out and now the bank gets to do some more, guess you've guessed it, selling because those breakout traders are buying, right? So let me just clear this up a little bit. Okay, so, so we had the level, we had the sell off, we had the break up through the level now we've had the breakout traders come in and it continues uh, uh, even further. So you have one, two, three candles. It doesn't have to be one, two, three. And obviously, you know, the, the, the longer this goes, that can be, you know, whatever distance. But just, just looking at it, you, you sort of like, if anyone was to be asked if that had broken out, you would, you would anticipate um, uh, the response being yes, right? It's obvious. It looks like it's broken out. You have one candle, two candles break out, three candles break out. So any momentum trader, just like the entry cheese down in here, uh, in that first third, 
just like the, just like those those uh, those traders the more convincing this breakout is so one candle is obviously convincing if it's an engulfing candle it's really convincing if it closes near its highs it's really really convincing that's going to get most people breakout traders in but then the second candle the third candle the fourth candle is only going to add to draw more traders into the position now you guessed it with more buying going on there right the bank can do more selling so it's, it's it's just beneficial that this is this is how it is it's getting more and more convincing okay so the next candle though let me just clear that up the next candle is a bear candle and it starts to head down right so here's the new high in price and because we've made a new high the trend trader believes what well, when the market's been making a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, or in this case, stroke new high, right? What, what's, the, what's in the mind of the retracement trend trader in a scenario like this? They're poised to start buying potentially when price, if price drops back, into that location right because they, they believe the trend then will follow through continue on and break to new uh, new highs over here right continue on so as price comes back into this level so it sells off again the retracement trade is poised to go along now there will be some people who just place orders buy orders at that level buy orders right so what does that allow the bank to do allows it to do some more selling so we've got some selling in here and there's the average price of 100 where the bank wants to do its bidding but now we've got all this average price where it's gone higher and the bank's been able to sell at a better price higher up as price comes into this level there'll be people just buying at the level the structure believing it's going to continue so you're going to get some more buying again this is willing buying but let's just say that as price comes back into the level we get a big engulfing candle or maybe we get a massive doji candle or something that represents that that level is probably working that there's some buying occurring at the level well guess what as i just said the retracement trader is going to come in off the sidelines and do what they're going to go along and again so through this process this is entry cheese again so again, you know, it could be one candle that's very convincing that's going to draw them in. It could be two, three candles, etc. The more the merrier, right? The more the merrier because it's going to encapsulate anybody who was trading that as a level of uh, a, a, a sort of a break, pullback, retracement in a trend. Anyone who's going to buy there, if you get two, three candles in a row, that's going to get them all in because they can't wait until it breaks that prior high because then they become breakout traders and that's not the type of trader they are. The breakout traders are in here, the retracement traders are in here and the breakout traders again are in there but they're yet to, to come back in because it hasn't reached there yet. So it, before it reaches that point, this is where the retracement traders are going to take a trade. So I, know, I realize that's getting a little bit messy so let me um, just tidy that up a little bit. So here's our level, here's our first bit of selling, and then it goes up through the level, it gets so it stops those traders out, it breaks up, breakout momentum traders go in, pulls back, reacts off the level, and now we've got the retracement trader. So RT and breakout for uh, breakout momentum traders, RT uh, for retracement traders. And in here, they get that extra uh, confirmation, some type of candle formation some type of positive trading before the pri that prior high is broken and then they go in and go long place their stops below this swing right as they would do they place the stop under that structure in here and they are believing that the trend is going to continue like so so it induces more people in to go long and guess what Who's there waiting to take those orders? The bank.